In this video, I want to show you how you can screen your competition in Amazon. Now, you can learn an awful lot about your competition by carefully evaluating their listings. And doing this at this early stage in the course is actually very important because it's going to help you to understand how listings are put together. And when we come on to talk about how you can actually list your products, you'll have a, a good in-depth preparation for how to put a, a listing together effectively that's going to um, be able to sell your products very well. Now, we'll leave that optimization until later in the course. Uh, for the purposes of this lecture, we're going to concentrate on evaluating the competition. Now, to make this easier, I've created a spreadsheet, which I've called the FBA scorecard, which I'll take you through, show you and make available to you in the next lecture. But this is the core structure of the FBA, uh, FBA scorecard. And this is what we're going to work through now. The first thing to look at is the product title. And essentially, the question is, how are the competition presenting their product? And all you're looking for now is not the detailed words, but just to see how many lines they're taking up. How detailed a description is it? Because if it's only a single line, they're actually giving away space that they could be using to promote their products. And that tells you immediately um, that they are weaker competition. So the key question is, how many lines are they using for their product title? The next thing to look down at is the number of bullets. Bullets are a great way to convey the benefits of your product and reasons why the customer should be buying from you. But the so often you see listings and they've only got one or two bullets. I think you can have seven, but whatever, whatever it's six or seven, um, the key question is to have a look and see how many bullets the competitor listing includes. Then you come onto the product description, which is further down the listing, but I want to deal with it now. And this is a real opportunity to put your copywriting skills to the test. What can you tell about your competition and their copywriting skills by looking at their description and how lengthy it is and how much detail it is? How many lines fundamentally have they um, put to use to describe their product in their product description? But we can look at it a little bit in more detail by saying, well, how well laid out is it? Is it a single block of text or have they split it up and put bullets in and put bold in? Um, in other words, by scoring their layout, it tells you something about um, how professionally and how aggressively they are marketing their product to the reader. Also within the description, you expect to see specifically benefits, call to actions and guarantees. Now, even though Amazon provides a guarantee, it's always worth stating that you provide the guarantee and you basically the same guarantee that Amazon is providing. But it takes away risk for the buyer and it helps them to be told that. So we need to mark them for um, the communication of benefits, calls to action and guarantees. So looking then at um, the list of competitors and what you want to be seeing here is how many other listings are there for this exact product with this number? And this will tell you a little bit about the competitiveness of the segment. But don't forget that by branding your own product, you can get your own unique number. And by doing that, you actually take yourself out of that competitive segment. Images are also very important. And ideally, you want to get your product uh, illustrated with highly professional, very um, compelling images. But so often people just put in one or two images. And I think, again, you can have six or seven. Have a look and see how many images are there, what's the quality like, and then score them accordingly. Now, sales rank tells you how well they're selling at this particular moment uh, in the Amazon universe. And it's interesting if you look at their sales rank in a major sector and then look how many um, different products there are in that particular segment, then you'll be able to get an idea of where they rank percentile wise. And this will tell you how high up they are and therefore how many sales they're getting. So it's a really useful calculation you can do by looking at the sales rank. When you look at the list price, um, again, part of the marketing is, is you, it's not just a question of what the absolute price is. It's, are they offering a discount and what's the percentage of that discount? Because very often by pricing it high and then discounting it down, people feel they're getting a bargain. They're more likely to buy. So are they discounting and what is the percentage of that discount? 
The we're going to go now into some of the more details of the details of the products, but they are relevant because you want to make sure they conform to your product criteria. So what is the weight in pounds? Uh, would, does it fit within your, your product criteria selection? And what's the shipping weight? We can also look at the dimensions. Uh, again, you can get that by putting it into the Amazon Revenue Calculator and it'll tell you what all the dimensions are. And obviously you want something which is going to be smaller rather than larger. Um, so definitely make a note of the dimensions. It'll also be helpful for you as well when you, if you're producing an exactly the, a, a product which is exactly the same, then you'll, you'll get the dimensions from Amazon this way. Now, gross margin is important because it'll tell you what all the costs are associated with this particular product. And you'll be able to work out how much gross margin you've got to play with when you come to, to see when you're paying, paying for your product from your supplier. Uh, and you'll be able to see you know, where your margins are likely to be. And it's really important not to take on a product where you haven't got sufficient gross margin. Now, I don't want to get sucked into pricing at this point. But it's definitely worthwhile running this through the uh, the revenue calculator and seeing where you stand um, because you do need to understand what sort of margin business you're getting into. A key point to look at um, is, is the item being sold by Amazon? Does it say sold by Amazon? This will indicate to you that it's a very high selling product and Amazon have taken it over. So you're going to have to differentiate yourself quite substantially in order to separate yourself from you're competing head to head with Amazon. And obviously, if it's not being sold by Amazon, that's a, a, a good thing in one point because it's a less competitive product, but it may not be such a big market and such a high seller. And you definitely want to be in the big market high seller categories. How many reviews is a very helpful. Now, we've talked already about having to get a minimum of 50 reviews. Um, but if you look at the number of reviews this product has got, it'll give you some idea of how competitive it's going to, to be against your product. And I'd say pretty well, don't take on anything that's got more than a thousand reviews. Um, and if it obviously it's got very few reviews, then you're in a great spot. Um, and it's also interesting to look at the spread of reviews between one star reviews all the way up to five star reviews. And I like to calculate the ratio between one and two star reviews and five star reviews. Now we can use reviews to our advantage for other things by going in and having a look at them in, in detail and seeing what's being said about the product, good, bad ideas, feedback from customers. But just for the moment, we're just doing a numerical analysis. So what's the total score? In the scorecard, you'll end up with a total score and a high score reflects a competitive listing and a low score reflects a less competitive listing. But in going through this process systematically, stroke by stroke, you will have winkled out all the important issues that are sitting there in a, uh, an Amazon listing. And that's what you'll need to be concentrating on when you put your own product up, which is why it's really important that you go through these couple of lectures and learn all about the ins and outs of Amazon listings. So that's it. How to screen your competitors in Amazon. I hope you found that helpful and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly in another video.